Welcome back to the first half of chapter two. In this video, we're going to really get into the details of how to read position time graphs. So as a reminder from what we covered in the first couple of videos from chapter two, we discussed the difference between scalar quantities and vector quantities and why that matters so much. Scalars are term uh, variables that only need to have a size associated with it. How much of this thing do you have? Whereas vectors, in order to be specified, they need two pieces of information, a piece of size information and the direction that that vector, that arrow, is pointing. So let's check our understanding. Out of the list here, which of them are vectors? Pause the video if you need some extra time to think. So displacement is a vector, distance is not, speed is not, and velocity is a vector. Remember velocity and vector both start with V, helps us to remember, and velocity is based on displacement. What we also finished the previous video with was recognizing that if we draw a line connecting two points on a position time graph, the slope of that line is average velocity. So we have the description of average velocity, delta x over delta t. Average speed is a little bit more complicated, and if we go through a part of the motion where the object turns around or changes direction, then average speed is much more complicated in that graph form um, than average velocity is. So let's consider situations where the velocity is changing. So rather than a constant velocity, which would just be a straight line, fairly straightforward to understand, if we have a velocity that is changing, then what's really useful for us to know about and think about is instantaneous velocity. How fast are we going at that moment in time? Now the official physics equation for that idea is that what we're looking for is v as the limit on the change in time goes to zero on that same equation that we've talked about before. Now we're not doing anything with limits in this class. Um, this is starting to get into the ideas of calculus, which we don't use in this class. But we can make the connection on how this equation graphically turns into the idea of a tangent line. And if you've never seen a tangent line before, we're going to make sure we are all on the same page with that. So a tangent line is defined as a point that touches a curve at a single spot without crossing over locally. So you're basically hitting that line up against the curve without crossing it. And the way that that has to do with a limit on delta t going to zero is one that we'll explore with this graph here after we kind of orient ourselves a little bit. So let's say that we have the graph here. The first thing we always wanna do, every single graph we ever look at, whether it's in this class or in our lives, is to look at what the axes are trying to tell us about and what the units that are, that are being used. So the vertical axis here is position or location in units of meters. And the horizontal axis here is time, t, in seconds. The number indicated by the vertical dashed line then is eight seconds. We are taking eight seconds and we're finding what position we had at that, look, at that moment in time. The position is fairly straightforward to read off, especially if we had more tick marks, but what we care about in this new example is what was our velocity at that exact moment. So let's consider our understanding of average velocity and how it helps us to work towards instantaneous velocity. If we're interested in that t equals eight seconds point, we can take um, points along the graph on either side of it, connect them, and get the average velocity over that time frame from zero seconds to 16 seconds. If we want a better estimate though, we take a smaller time range that still has to be centered around our key point. 
So now we're taking the average velocity from 3 seconds to 13, and delta t went from 16 seconds down to 10 seconds. We can bring it down even further to 4 seconds. We see what we start to mean by this limit as the value goes to 0. And each time that we're doing this average velocity for a shorter time frame, we are getting a better and better estimate of the instantaneous velocity. We could take the time points on either side, and now we're starting to see that we are getting very close to hitting it at only one spot. And that, by definition, the tangent line which touches at 8 seconds but kind of follows along the curve and extends it, that is what we mean by a tangent line, and that is representing the instantaneous velocity. The slope of the tangent line gives us the instantaneous velocity. So if there's a changing velocity, we can quickly compare if we're speeding up or slowing down by comparing slopes early on in time and later on in time. So for example, at the points P and Q, even without plugging anything into a calculator, when is the object moving faster? At which of those two points? Hopefully you thought or said out loud Q. Q is when the slope is steeper. Steeper means the number value for the slope is bigger, which means the average instantaneous velocity is a bigger number. Okay, so let's try this with a graph. So here we have position in meters on the vertical axis and time in seconds on the horizontal axis. Any time that we are working with grid paper, we not only have to look at what the axes and units are, but we need to make sure we recognize that the um, size of the grid boxes will be different from one graph to the next. If we look from 0 up to 5 meters, to the slightly bolder line, has 10 grid boxes, which means that each step is 0.5 or half a meter. If we do not recognize that, we will make mistakes when we are drawing on graphs, which is something that you'll be expected to do in assignments as well as in lab. And so you want to make sure to be aware of that. For time in seconds, to get from 0 seconds to 1 second is 10 grid boxes 2, and so it's 0.1 or a tenth of a second. If we want to find the instantaneous velocity at 6 seconds, we must draw a tangent line first. Far too many students decide that we go to six seconds and we see that the position at that moment in time looks to be uh, maybe 17.5 meters, and then they just take that position divided by the time, which completely ignores the idea of what velocity cares about. A position at a single point in time is not the same thing as the idea of displacement. We must draw a tangent line first and then find two points on that tangent line and plug into our understanding of slope. For this particular example, I took or we took the um, point where it hits the bottom. So when the um, position is zero meters, the time is 3.3 seconds, and we took the last vertical line on the side where the time is 9 seconds and the um, position is 39 meters. Two grid boxes below 40, that's two half meters below 40 for 39. If you drew your own tangent line, you may not get the exact same number, but you should get roughly 6.8 meters per second. 6.7, 6.9, that's okay. But the key thing is that if you draw a tangent line, you will get a good estimate for the instantaneous velocity. To get the exact number, we would need calculus. Okay, so let's think about a couple more graph examples. We will have to think about that idea of drawing tangent lines. But what I want to focus our attention on, too, is that we need to make sure we understand the idea of graphs, being able to read them the same way that we can read the text on this slide. 
So let's start out by acclimating ourselves a little bit. Let's say that this is a bicycle and we're plotting the motion or the position of this bicycle over time. From zero to three seconds, the position time plot has a straight line on it. What does that mean about the velocity during that time range? Hopefully you thought to yourself or said out loud that it was constant. If we see a straight line on a position time graph, then we are talking about something that is cruising at a constant velocity. Okay, so here's three questions that I want you to ask and answer in your notes. So pause the video for as long as you need to, to answer these three questions. Commit to an answer before you keep watching. Okay. So first question, at t equals four seconds, is the bike's instantaneous velocity slower, faster, or the same as the velocity for the first three seconds? To answer that, we are basically asking, is that slope um, shallower, steeper, or the same slope? At four seconds, that portion has a steeper slope, which means that it is moving faster. That first question, the answer would be faster. The next question, what is happening to the bike at t equals seven seconds? If we look at that part of the chart, the line is flat. The slope of a flat line like that is zero meters per second, which means that the bike has stopped moving at seven seconds. In fact, it's, it stopped moving at five seconds and then the timer has just continued to go. And just to make sure we understand the ideas from the previous um, video, we can think about the average velocity equation. For the entire eight seconds, we want the total change in position over the total change in time. We have changed our position to be a full 16 meters different from where we started. And it took us eight seconds to do so. So our average velocity is positive two meters per second. All right, another question for us. For the two position time plots shown below, which one shows an object that is increasing velocity? Pause the video so that you can think through it and try to describe either out loud or in written sentences why you chose the graph that you did. Okay. On the left, if we look at how the slope changes, it was a small number slope, shallow, and it ends up being a steeper slope, bigger number slope, which means that on the left, this object, its instantaneous velocity was small, now it is big, and so it is speeding up, it's increasing its velocity. On the right, the object has a flatter and flatter slope as time goes on, which means its velocity is decreasing. It is slowing down and nearly stopped by the end of this motion. All right, same kind of idea here. Just describe in words what's happening to the object in each of these two graphs. Okay, so on the left, Let's think about this. We had an object that was kind of curving upwards, speeding up. In that middle time frame, around three seconds, it's cruising at a almost straight line. And then it starts to slow down. So on the left, what we have is an object that is speeding up and then slowing down. In the second graph, the one on the right, we have a fairly constant um, velocity at the beginning, but it starts to flatten out. And at about four seconds, the slope of a tangent line that we could draw would be zero, which means it's stopped moving briefly at four seconds. And then the slope starts to get very steep and very negative. What that means is the graph on the right is showing us an object that is slowing down and then stopping to turn around and go in the opposite direction and speed up that way. Okay, how about this one? In this example, we have an object that is defying the laws of physics 
a quick way to recognize that this cannot work, that this is not even a valid position time graph, is where is this object at t equals 2 seconds? It is at 5 meters, it is also at 18 meters, and it is also at 24 meters. So we have some kind of time travel situation here, which unfortunately still hasn't been invented yet. And so we do want to recognize the limitations of what can even be called a valid graph too, along with all of these other ideas we've been learning. All right, I'm going to end with this slide and kind of let us know what's coming up next. We've talked about distance and displacement and then speed and velocity. And there's one more step to that uh, set of new concepts, which is acceleration. And that's what we'll be introducing in the next video. But here is a kind of side-by-side -side description of how on two different position time graphs, on the left we have the definition of average velocity is the change in um, position over the change in time. This particular graph uh, uses d instead of x, but the idea is the same. They also use the word secant line. We won't actually see that word ever again after this slide, but it's that kind of thing where if you have seen that in a previous math class, I do want to make the connection there, the line connecting two points on the same curve. And then instantaneous velocity is the slope of the tangent line, a line that only touches the curve at one spot and kind of follows along that um, slope nearby that spot, but continues away from the curve itself. So we'll be practicing these ideas and we'll be adding to them in the next couple of videos. See you in those.